Hi, and welcome to part one of Hydronics Step by Step. I'm John Barba, and if this is your first Taiko e-learning course, let me show you around a little bit. First off, you're going to see a list of lessons over here on your left. The list of lessons will make up this first course, Hydronics Step by Step. Now, our e-learning software is going to keep track of which lessons you've completed and automatically start you up on the next lesson if you leave off part way and return later. Now, if you want to review a lesson, you can always go back on it and click again. Now, below me, down here, you'll see the standard video controls. Feel free to pause the video if you need more time during the quizzes or scroll back if you didn't follow something in the course and want to go over it again. Now, during the quizzes and the final exam, the lesson list will change to multiple choice answers that you can click on to record your answers during the quiz. In this program, we're going to build a hydronic heating system, just like the title says, step-by-step, piece-by-piece, from the ground up, right through to startup. Now, we're going to do a quick run-through of the complete process, touching on all of these important topics. This is a survey course, however. For most of these topics and others, you'll find a separate, standalone e-learning course that will give you a lot more detail if you want it. We also have a library of reference courses that will provide you with a solid introduction or a quick refresher of some of the math formulas and calculations commonly used in hydronics design and installation. Ready? Let's begin. Now this may be an oversimplification, but to me, building any hydronic system has to start with a heat loss. You've got to calculate the heat loss of the structure, and for that you've got to do some math, or at least know the reason your calculator is spitting out the numbers it's spitting out. It's important to do a heat loss analysis for two reasons. First, it establishes a clear target for your heating system so you know what you want to achieve and what you want to put in. Second, it creates some documentation for your customer so the homeowner understands why you're recommending a certain approach and why it's a good value for him. To calculate the heat loss of a structure, we follow a pretty straightforward process. First, we determine the infiltration heat loss of the structure, and then we figure out its conductive heat loss. Now, before we get started, though, we have to define a few terms that we're going to be using, such as infiltration heat loss and conductive heat loss, outdoor design temperature, indoor design temperature, the design temperature difference, air infiltration factors, U values, and R values. Let's start at the beginning. What is infiltration heat loss? Well, that's the heat loss due to heated air leaking out of the structure and then cold air seeping in to replace it. Conductive heat loss, on the other hand, is the heat loss that is lost through common building materials, walls, doors, windows, ceilings, floors, roofs, etc. Infiltration factors are simply a set of numbers that express the degree of infiltration that will take place in a room of any given configuration like a room with two outside walls, for instance. The indoor design temperature is the temperature we want the system to maintain during the heating season, indoors, of course. Now, in most cases, the number we use is 70 degrees. The outdoor design temperature, on the other hand, is that nominal coldest day of the year in your area. You get that number from a set of figures published by ASHRAE. For our example that we're going to do today, we'll use zero degrees. Now, I'm guessing you've already figured out that the design temperature difference, or DTD, is basically the difference between the temperature we want indoors and that coldest day of the year outdoor design temperature outdoors. Now, in our example, we want 70 degrees indoors when it's zero degrees outdoors, so the DTD, or design temperature difference in this example, will be 70 degrees. If you want to keep these definitions in front of you as we go on, you can download a PDF file of HVAC terms from the website that you can view on your computer or print out. Okay, with these definitions in mind, we can get started. But I just want to say one thing first. The calculations we're going to do are pretty simple, and they take a lot less time to do, in fact, than it takes for me to explain them to you. There are also tons of heat loss calculators out there available in software form, including one in the Flow Pro Designer software that you can download for free from the Taiko Flow Pro Team website. That website's www.flowproteam.com. They all use the same math formulas, and they all use data from the same sources, such as IBR, ASHRAE, or ACA's Manual J. And they all have a safety factor or a fudge factor built into them, so you don't have to add any extra. It's already been taken care of. 
But I do think it's good to do at least some of the heat loss calculations manually so you truly understand what the numbers mean and where they're coming from. Enough said on that. Okay, as we mentioned earlier, heat loss comes from two separate elements. The first is air infiltration, or heat lost due to heated air leaking from inside of the house to the outside of the house and cold air coming in to replace it. Now, this air is going to need to be heated back up to comfortable levels. Infiltration heat loss, along with window loss, will be the two largest elements in the overall heat loss calculation. Now, the second big component of heat loss would be conductive heat transmission through walls, ceilings, floors, as well as through doors, windows, skylights, things like that. By any measure, however, heat loss is an estimation. It's better than an educated guess, but it is an estimate rather than a precise calculation all the same. Now, you can go to great lengths to be as accurate as possible, but you'll get acceptable results by simply rounding up your calculations. It's easier that way. It's also important to do a room-by-room -room heat loss analysis, not just an analysis for the whole structure. A room-by-room -room analysis will enable you to adequately size the heat emitters, baseboard, radiators, radiant, floor heat, etc., for each individual room. A whole house heat loss is faster and simpler, and it will help you size the heating plant, but it doesn't help you much when it comes to making each room comfortable. That's it for lesson number one. Stick around for the next lesson where we'll get into the meat and the potatoes of a heat loss analysis.